On September 14, 1982, the celebrated novelist and critic John Gardner died in a still mysterious motorcycle crash on a remote Pennsylvania road. In the 11 years leading up to that moment, Gardner had seen his fame skyrocket with the publication of his masterful short novel, Grendel, and then decline again almost as rapidly. He had become a legendary teacher of creative writing, authoring two now classic guides to the craft. He'd also been accused of plagiarism and offended many of the most famous writers of his day with his 1978 diatribe on moral fiction. Less than three weeks before his death, I recorded two conversations with Gardner at the Breadloaf Writers Conference in Middlebury, Vermont. These would become his last interview. In an upcoming tribute episode of The Story Talks Back, I will share excerpts from those conversations, as well as interviews with some of the people who knew him best, including his son, Joel, his fiancée at the time of his death, Susan Thornton, and his friend, colleague, and student, Ron Hansen, now a celebrated novelist in his own right. Take a listen to this preview. Gardner speaks first, and please lean into your speaker to be sure you'll hear him. Every book, to be really good, has to be passionate. And the question is, what is the passion of our time? Um, if you just had a divorce, the passion you feel at that second is passion of loss or betrayal or, or whatever. Um, and that can make a book. But, but if you keep getting the passion of fiction out of little things in your life, you're never, you're never going to get very much passion. You're not, not ever going to get very great fiction. He had a real electric personality. I don't know if people who read him can understand exactly how dynamic and charismatic he was in his presence. And that enabled him to say almost anything and get away with it. I, if, if you were in a room and he walked into it, suddenly the atmosphere changed and people would be like, what happened? Something's different. You know, even without seeing him walk in, somehow the air was just different. Um, he, he had an amazing focus. He could make you feel like the only person in the room. Uh, I don't know, the, the air was more rarefied. It was just an amazing experience. It's hard to say what he was looking for, but he was definitely looking uh, for more than most of us do. And I think therefore willing to upend marriages, to take financial risks, to take physical risks, um, bad behavior on horseback and thunderstorms and motorcycles and driving a car like it really mattered uh, to pass some old farmer on a blind curve at going 45 miles an hour when, you know, you might all die. Um, I guess it would be an understatement to say he wasn't careful. He would say things like a novel is a, is a big baggy monster, you know, or he would say, you know, there ought to be something in a novel where at the end of the novel, you should feel like your head should explode. I mean, he would say these outrageous things that really couldn't be analyzed. So yes, one, one side of him was this sort of careful analytical side and the other side was this sort of um, open to any kind of strangeness. He was kind of a wild man. He was full of energy and excitement. And, but behind all that was incredible wisdom and um, an experience that was incredible for somebody as young as he was. And he had written so many books of so many different types that uh, everything seemed familiar to him. Mm -hmm. 